Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting edition of Harvest. Valerie Lowe alongside Stephen Radelich and Chuck Freeby. And joining us a little later on in the show is Adele Campbell Dickey. She shares her incredible story about a fatal accident that transformed her life with the help of the Holy Spirit. And Middle East correspondent, of course, Brian Bush, has an update on the latest news happening now in that region. And Chuck, I don't know which is warmer, the temperature outside <laughs> or the presidential election. I mean, man, what's going on with the weather? Well, the weather here in the Midwest <laughs> is oppressively... You should feel right at home, I Florida do. girl. I do. When I walked out, when I stepped outside this morning, I was like, whoa, this yeah. feels just like Orlando. But after being here several years, I'm kind of getting adjusted to four seasons, so it was hot to me today. It, no, it, it's definitely <laughs> hot. And, and what's interesting is we are talking on the set before the show that there are football teams in the area mm -hmm. going through two-a-days right now. Oh, my goodness. And you feel for those kids out there. And, and hopefully, you know, we've changed a little bit in our climate towards football uh, I think coaches are far more aware about the need for hydration and yes. making yes. sure young people stay hydrated. And overexertion. And overexertion. Back in the day, it was seen as a weakness. Yeah. You oh, went for the water okay. bottle. Yeah. And today, you're you're pretty much not too smart if you're not going for the water yeah. bottle. Yeah, it's well, good to see that change. I saw this story of a local principal who went out and gave popsicles out to the band members, football mm -hmm. players, and what have you, mm -hmm. uh, so that they could stay hydrated. Hopefully they didn't melt by the time <laughs> they got them all in their hands. Uh, but uh, weather's not the only hot thing. We've got a great special coming up tomorrow oh, that we yes. want to make mention of and let our friends and viewers know. Much anticipated World Pulse Festival 30. It was amazing. And tomorrow is the broadcast release of the one-hour special of WPF 30, highlighting both the artists mm -hmm. in front of the stage and behind the stage, getting to catch up with many of the artists to kind of see what makes them tick. Yeah, so if you didn't get a chance to attend World Pulse Festival, just catch us tomorrow morning. Okay, you guys, you know, I was watching, reading the headlines, you know, every now and then I'll, you know, you know, pay close attention to the presidential election because mm -hmm. we have like 88 days left. And some of the comments that have been made now, I think it is Donald Trump who has said that uh, President Obama uh, founded ISIS. Were those mm -hmm. his words? We'll be covering that oh, in the international okay. news segment. So, so we'll, we'll just uh, we'll just let that go. Right <laughs> now. There's a lot coming up, and we want to know your thoughts. You can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, and at liveatlessee.com. We'll be right back with world news. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. On this Thursday, August 11th, 2016, here's what's happening in your world. A Canadian man previously banned from associating with Islamic State extremists has been killed as Canada's National Police Force thwarted what they believed was a suicide bomb plot. The suspect was Aaron Driver. He's a man in his mid-20s, originally from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Driver had been under the spotlight for at least a year as authorities believed he was a threat because he could help terror groups. At a campaign rally in Fort Lauderdale Wednesday, Donald Trump did say President Barack Obama is the founder of the Islamic State group and that somehow the group is honoring Obama. You know, they honor President Obama. ISIS is honoring President Obama. He is the founder of ISIS. He's the founder of ISIS. Trump also discussed emails released by the conservative group Judicial Watch that shed light on ties between the State Department and the Clinton Foundation. Republicans say those emails show improper influence on the State Department by the Clinton Family Charitable Foundation. It's a claim Clinton's campaign denies. Now, the father of the Orlando gay nightclub shooter was spotted at a campaign event for Hillary Clinton in Central Florida. Sadiq Mateen was standing in the crowd and taking photos behind Clinton during the Monday night event in Kissimmee, south of Orlando. 
A campaign official said Mateen was not invited to attend the public event, and the campaign was not aware he was there until it ended. Fires whipped by high winds are ravaging swaths of Portugal, killing at least four people, burning scores of homes, and forcing the evacuation of thousands, including tourists. A fire swept overnight into Fanchal, the capital of Portugal's Madeira Islands, killing three elderly people and leaving more than 300 with minor burns and smoke inhalation. A full 186 wildfires were counted yesterday on Portugal's mainland. Desperate that government there has requested help from other European Union countries. Fire officials say at least 20 to 25 people, including two firefighters, were injured in a large fire overnight in an apartment building in a Maryland suburb of Washington. The first responders were dispatched to the scene in Silver Spring just before midnight Wednesday. Not everyone is yet accounted for. The fire involved at least two or three buildings. Coming up later, Brian Bush joins us with Israeli views of the Olympics. But up next, Adele Campbell Dickey shares her incredible story about a fatal accident that transformed her life. We're right back with more Harvest after this. Hi, this is Stefan Radulich with Feed the Hungry, and I want to encourage you to become a Full Life Monthly Partner today. Why is that so important? Well, because children like these children at the Kiriandongo Refugee Camp come to school every day for a hot meal. For all of these kids, this is the best meal they're going to have. For many of them, it might be the only meal that they have on a given day of any month. Because of your monthly support, we can make a monthly commitment to schools like this. It takes $6 a month to take care of one child. So maybe today, you can make that $6 a month commitment, or 12 or 18. Or maybe you can make a commitment of $30 or $60. And for doing that, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 or visit feedthehungry.org to help a child know how good a full life feels. Adele Dickey is a remarkable woman, widowed at a younger age. Adele has been able to share the moving story of her personal losses to audiences worldwide, bringing hope, encouragement, and practical insight to others who need to know that despite life's trials, God's strength can cause us to triumph. Good to have you with us again. Thank you. I can't remember when, but I know that, that uh, we've, <laughs> been a few years. We've, we've been here before. Yeah, 2006, our producer said. Uh, Adele, yeah. good to catch up again. But just uh, uh, let's, let's kind of start from in the big picture of, sure. of uh, your life and story and really just the fact that at every turn, God seemed to be there. Right. Well, I didn't grow up in a home that attended church, so I walked up the street at about the age of six, and a lady invited me in, mm -hmm. and I began to go to church, and at the age of 12, she asked me to go to a church camp, and I went there, and I began a personal relationship with Christ that has changed my life and sustained me through many, many things, mm -hmm. and then I began going to a church and getting a uh, good foundation, and at mm -hmm. the age of 18, on my way to church one evening, a five-year-old little boy ran in front of my car and was killed instantly. Wow, wow. Yeah. Now, just taking a moment to look look at that, uh, you young girl driving, you know, and, and uh, that must have been a devastating thing to try to process and, and make sense of. It was very interesting because that church camp that I went to year after year, mm -hmm. they had you me memorize Bible verses. And I realized at 18 that all the things that I had memorized, I needed to somehow get from my head to my heart. Mm -hmm. And that process took a while. However, God just put the right people in, in my path, and He showed me in His Word His promises. He'd never leave us nor forsake us. And He is our comforter. And I learned so many things during that time. But yes, it did take some processing. I know a, a big part of your ministry deals with the issue of forgiveness. Right. And uh, you know, that kind of a, a seminal moment, uh, you know, accidentally taking a life, how did, how did, how did you kind of uh, discover forgiveness? How did you receive forgiveness? Uh, how did you ask for forgiveness? Yeah, the parents of the little boy that I had hit were Amish and they wrote me a beautiful letter of forgiveness. Mm. And then I realized that I was holding myself um, responsible and I had to realize that it was an accident. Mm -hmm. And I think forgiveness is twofold. Once we, 
we choose to forgive and then continually a process of letting go each time that comes up. Mm -hmm. And so I, it was a process once again of learning to forgive, mm -hmm. choosing to forgive. Well, Adele, it's, you know, sometimes we say, we play this in our minds that I do forgive myself, mm -hmm. I'm forgiven. But then something else happened in your life years later where you were challenged to go through the entire process again. Tell us about that. Well, actually, after the little boy um, was killed, I married and my husband was, um, after three years, we found out we were expecting a child and my husband was found to have a terminal heart condition. And he, um, they asked us at that time because it was a hereditary possibility for our child if we wanted to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. And we said no. And hiding God's word in your heart is very important when a snap decision needs to come up. So we went through that and he was given seven to 10 years to live. So we had a healthy little boy after nine months and then uh, two years later had a little girl and life seemed to be smoothed out pretty well and I can remember my children were seven and nine and on the anniversary date of hitting of the accident of hitting the little boy I always tried to stay busy on that day and that day I was out helping my sister and I came home and I noticed a bunch of people on the corner and I asked what had happened and my own daughter had ridden her bicycle in front of a car mm. and was critically injured she laid in a coma for five weeks and was in an intensive care unit for three months. And during that time, that was all again, you know, all over the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. People asked me, did you have trouble forgiving the woman that hit your daughter? No. After you've received that kind of forgiveness, mm -hmm. it was very easy for me to um, be able to forgive her. Were mm -hmm. you tempted to believe what the enemy probably told you, which was, this is punishment for what you had yeah. done years earlier. It was interesting, because when I had children, mm -hmm. I, I did have those thoughts of, am I gonna be paid back? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've been asked that by several people, did you feel like you were paid back? But by the time that actually happened, God had given me so much mm -hmm. grace and understanding that I realized that we live in a fallen world. Little girls run in front of big cars, they get hurt. Yeah. Um, so God really worked ahead of time. So I was able to let go of that fear. But at one time that really gripped me. So I always say God took my greatest fear, allowed it to become a reality and turned it into a miracle. Mm -hmm. Because after many months, my daughter, um, well, there was a time where my husband collapsed. He was on intensive it care. It was actually while, she, while Melissa was in the coma, right? Right. He was on intensive care in one floor and she was on intensive care in another floor. Wow. Wow. And God just really touched the whole situation. And he, my husband was only hospitalized for a few days at that time. And then Melissa was released after nine months. She had to learn how to swallow, how to eat, how to walk, how to talk. But she was hit in the fall and by the end of, or by the, end of the school year, she had caught up with her class. Uh, going back to uh, that moment and the, the time surrounding, you know, when Melissa's in the ICU and then your husband Steve collapses and he's brought into another ICU unit in that same hospital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for people today that are going through some difficulties, severe difficulties, uh, pressing, you know, issues mm -hmm. uh, that just seem insurmountable, how did you kind of find peace and how did you find resolve uh, to carry through that time? Well, there, there are I'm a one, two, three person. Give me the answers, tell me how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of tried to look for those for other people even. And I realized that first I needed to totally commit the whole situation to him. Just give it over. Just step back and step right. away. Mm -hmm. And then trust. Mm -hmm. My life verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to do. I had to I couldn't lean on my own understanding. I couldn't figure out why all this was happening. I just had to trust. Mm -hmm. And in that trusting, I realized that during the good times, you really have to feed into yourself and you have to have some things in place in our life. We all need those things. And that is daily, get close to the Lord, get into his word, get a great prayer life, spend time in prayer, um, I always say nuzzle up to the Lord because I, I feel comforted by doing that daily. Mm -hmm. 
and also get people in your life that will help you, um, whether that be your friends that you can talk to, your pastor, or a Christian counselor. I'm big on that because suffering's twofold. One, you walk through it and you learn a lot. Two, you, when we reflect back on it, we learn even more. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need help to do that. Mm -hmm. And so those are some of the things that I learned during that time mm -hmm. and to hold on to his promises. Well, Adele, you know, we were talking in the green room and you just seem to have so much joy and contentment, peace. And, you know, other people have turned to alcohol and drugs when going through a difficult time. What do you say to that person who's struggling right now with something that has been so tragic that they have had to turn to something or someone other than God? I try to get them to see that God is the only answer. Mm -hmm. And the joy I have is amazing of what the Lord's done in my life. And I'm just so grateful for that. But my husband, my first husband, Steve, was an amazing man in the fact that when he was diagnosed and told that he had seven to 10 years, he looked at me and he said, there's a lot of sickness in our home. And for that same amount of sickness, we're gonna balance it out with a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And in Proverbs, it says, laughter is good medicine. Mm -hmm. And so I try to, I'm a little off sometimes. I try to make people laugh. and. And no matter where I'm at, let's go to the grocery store and make the girl at the counter who's had just terrible people walking through wanting her to rush, make her feel good. You know, let's take time to enjoy each other and love on each other. And for me, that's a key. It's look for, make today count. Make mm -hmm. today count. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest part. Well, we're going to give you an opportunity to make today count. We've got about a minute here, Adele. And if you would just take a moment and pray for friends that are watching. If you're going through some serious situations today and you just feel like you can't get out from underneath the burden, the weight, the maybe it's an issue of forgiveness, maybe it's an issue of loss, maybe it's just an issue of, you know, you're just stuck and you don't know where to go, what to do. Can you pray for our friends watching today? I sure today? can. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace, thanking you and praising you for who you are. And Lord, I just ask for each person that's watching this today, that's going through a difficult time, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would come, adown, come down upon them yes, today, Lord. that they would feel your presence in a new and fresh way. And Lord, that they would be able to, in a new way, look at the day. And Lord, I just pray that you would lighten their burden and put people in their path that can touch their hearts. Lord, may we each take the opportunities that we have as we come in contact with other people throughout the day yes, to touch their hearts and draw them closer and show them you through who we are. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for who you are and what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Adele. Thank you. So glad you could be with us today. And to connect with Adele Dickey, go to AdeleDickey.com. <laughs> or as always, you can go to our website, harvest-tv.com, and uh, find an easy way to link there. Coming up later, uh, some more prayer requests. We're going to continue to pray. But up next, Brian Bush joins us with Israeli views of the Olympics. We'll be right back. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he established Lissy Broadcasting. The ministry today reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, shortwave satellites, free Bibles, and prayer lines. But we need your help. Will you join Partners in Faith by giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more? Give today by calling 1-800-365-3732 or visit Lissy.com. If you want to do more and be more, but your stamina runs out of steam, you need the top-selling Essential Vitamin Mineral Pack by Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. The Doctor's Making Healthy Choices Essential Pack costs only $59.95, but the health benefits are priceless. You get Mineral Concentrate, an unsurpassed formula of trace minerals essential to good health. Omega-3 for overall vascular support and healthy brain function. Vita Sprouts, a superior form of multivitamin 
vitamins, and you get Sol you see for a strong immune system. That's mineral concentrate, omega-3, Vita Sprouts, and Sol you see an incredible value for only $59.95. And if you act now, shipping is free. Call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com to get the doctor's essential pack from Making Healthy Choices. That's 1-800-965-2345 or mhclife.com. We always enjoy the chance to interact with our Jerusalem correspondent, Brian Bush, who joins us now from Israel. And Brian, with the Olympics happening right now, let's talk about that rather than the news, because my understanding is you've been a little closer to that world than some others have. Take me into the psyche a little bit of the games. Tell me about that. Well, you're flattering me a little bit, Chuck. I'm... Uh... <laughs> I worked out with athletes in my youth, and my daughter has uh, been trained by Olympians, uh, and uh, she's pretty good. Um, but, you know, well, first of all, you have to differentiate. You have to understand um, there's the uh, different aspects of the Olympics. There are the organization. Um, there is the sporting events. There is the humanitarian effort, the non-discrimination, universality, solidarity, and, of course, politics, big money, and power. But what drives the hype or the psych, as you say? It is the competition uh, on the finest fields on an international scale. Chuck? But when we think about it, most of these athletes don't really stand a chance to win a medal. Brian, can you hear me? Seems we may have lost our connection with Brian. Well, I hear what you're Here saying, but without a pool of athletes to compete, there would be no winner. And uh, the same could be said about the World Games, the Asia Games, the European Games. But look at the Australian who won the 100-meter freestyle in swimming. He dug down deep and came from behind, and he wasn't expected to. He was counted out. And then there's uh, the American swimmer, Katie. She is supposed to win everything, you know, but her team in the relay set her back deep in the pack. Yet she, again, she came from behind against overwhelming odds and won it for America in that competition. It is the competitive will and the manifestation. Uh, and there's nothing like watching it play out in a field of competition. Chuck? Brian, there are some Christians who don't like the idea of the Olympics. There are others who call it a waste. How is it viewed over there in the Middle East? I've heard people express those opinions, and I respect folks' view on that. Um, you know, here in the Middle East, well, let's start with Israel. Israel sent a delegation of 27, which is pretty large for a small country like this. They are not supported as athletes are supported in America and in other countries of the West. But, um, you know, overall in the region, there isn't the same emphasis and culture that children are brought up with about sport. In a large part of the Middle East, serious sport is laughed at. But the one exception is the World Cup, which also happens every four years. There is nothing bigger here in the Middle East than the World Cup. Um, there's nothing watched more than the World Cup. There is nothing more serious than the World Cup. It is the biggest sporting event, the Coupe du Monde. Chuck? All right, thank you for those insights, Brian. A reminder, Brian gives us exclusive content from Israel. But it's only available on the Harvest Show Facebook page. So please, make sure you like us on Facebook. We're right back with more Harvest after this. Friends like you have helped send over 700,000 Bibles around the world through our Spread the Word ministry. We're so thankful for your support to help us take the best news of all time to more of those hungry to hear it. Through your generosity, many thousands have already read about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And with your support, we look forward to helping fulfill Dr. Lester Sumrall's vision of reaching the untold billions yet untold with the gospel.
What if I told you that there's a place full of loved ones' photos that gets prayed for regularly? Prayer offers a direct line to God, so who couldn't use a little more of it? Getting yourself or your loved ones on this wall is as easy as click and send. The chapel at La C Prayer Line has a wall of love that's waiting to be filled up. Just email your pictures to prayer at lacy.com. That's it. Our chapel has been a focal point for prayer for the last 18 years. Let our prayer team pray for you. And to be sure to join us for our one hour special World Pulse Festival 2016, the 30th anniversary. The special will air tomorrow, Friday, August the 12th at 8.30 a.m. I know you're used to catching us at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but World Pulse Festival, the special, 8.30 a.m. Chuck Freebie will probably sing for you no. during the special. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we so know that. So there's that's a reason <laughs> to watch right there, since I won't be singing. Right, there you go. So be sure to catch us tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Hey, just such a powerful test testimony mm -hmm. from Adele Campbell Dickey. I mean, talking about the power of forgiveness, to forgive herself. And you know, so many times our viewers call in and say, you know, that's the prayer request that they have, that they need forgiveness. And if you're struggling with something, a situation, or you feel hopeless, give us a call. That number at prayer line is 1-800-365-3732. We have some amazing volunteers who are standing by waiting to pray with you, share the goodness of God with you. We are so glad you've decided to join us here on The Harvest Show today. Catch us tomorrow for the World Pulse Festival special. Since 2000, Live from Studio B has become an intimate venue for over 250 of today's most recognizable and up-and-coming Christian artists. Oh God, and you have made me new. And Visit livefromstudiob.com for performance schedules along with archive shows ready to be streamed. Live from Studio B, up close and personal with your favorite Christian artists. You know, there are so few things in this world that you can count on anymore, especially when it comes to our financial future and planning for retirement. We live in a dynamic world defined by change, but when it comes to securing our retirement income, we want stability, not uncertainty. And that's why I consistently talk about charitable gift annuities. A gift annuity provides a safe and steady income stream which is fixed for life, and you are investing into changing lives for Jesus Christ at the same time. If you are over 49 and a half years of age and you have at least $10,000 in a savings account or CD, call us today. Let us show you how you can have at least one form of retirement income that you can count on. When you lay up your treasure in heaven, you can count on it being there and waiting for you. So call us today and let us help you have a secure income for the rest of your life. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.